In, uh, in the late 80s, you developed the Gonzo style that you became uh, very yeah. really identified with, and this is a, you know, a, a big, uh, I mean, it's really kind of the dominant uh, mode of expression in porn now. Can you talk a little bit about what Gonzo is and how you came up with it? Well, in the 80s, everybody was, uh, for two reasons, just imitating Hollywood movies. They would, you know, you would, that's all we knew how to do, and you would make a movie with uh, bad actors and actresses that were hired just for their sex, and we'd shoot it on video, and it wouldn't look that great. And, uh, but you would and pretend the, that it was, uh, you know, it's like Star Wars with actual sex scenes. Yeah, sure but we, we usually didn't have the money to make it look uh, like Star Wars. Maybe yeah. we'd make it look like a soap opera or something right. like that, you know, okay. Days of Our Lives or something with people having sex at the end. Right. But, um, and then maybe some of that had to do with the fact that people were worried that they had to make a feature because mm -hmm. a feature was more easily defendable. Okay. Uh, so uh, in the, under Miller, and, uh, under Miller. Things, the idea under Miller. It, has an art, it's, it has a clear uh, artistic shape or you know, people yeah. can kind of understand. So in fact, the, the first Buttman, I created this character called Buttman. It was the, same, the summer that, uh, that Batman came out and the first couple of Buttman movies were features. They were, but they had two interesting different things about them. The first one was, the idea was well, that... they had a lot of butts in them. They had a lot of butts in it. That was, a, well, probably the most interesting thing. But, but the more significant thing was the fact that the concept was that you now, I wanted to do this thing that somebody had suggested for an amateur movie where the, the, the camera like starts on its side, it gets turned on, and you see the picture on its side, it gets turned up, set on a tripod, and these two couples come around from the side and say, we're the Smiths and these are the Joneses, and we're gonna make a porno movie. But the significant thing is they're looking right into the camera. There's a recognition that there's a camera there. And that guy didn't understand what he was saying to me because I took it, well, let me combine it with my butt fetish and I'd do, done these hard features for my company Evil Angel which I had just started in, in 89 as a manufacturer so I own my movies now and, and, I, and I said well girls can look right into the camera and be sexy that's what you used to see in some still pictures from porn so I just I did that I had girls look right into the camera and be sexy and that just that change of angle of looking at somebody else and now they're looking into the camera was so, has so much more impact and, and plus I had made 40 or 50 movies before that, so I knew how to work with the camera, and it's like, you know, zoom in quick and focus and whatever. I'm like talking with the camera, I'm looking at the girls, and, mm -hmm. and I was good at, at camera work at that point in my career. And, um, so you broke the fourth wall. Yeah, and that really was significant in that it became intimate. Porn became intimate, and, 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 I, and, and as I did the first couple of Buttman movies, I realized that okay, I just threw a couple of scenes in that like kind of related to the story, but then they kind of didn't because you've got a girl who has certain talents and then you've got guys that can do it. And rather than, 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 than do like a regular porn movie where you try and shoot the whole thing in two days or even one day, which people were doing, like, well, let me just, because I got my camera and I got a small crew, I could shoot one scene in one day. Let me shoot the best scene I can with that girl. Let me do a little story in itself in one scene in the movie, and then it's got like five scenes, and it's five little stories. But they're like, girls are looking right into the camera and being sexy, and I did these little crazy tea stories where I'd get in trouble for peeking over somebody's fence or doing something or whatever, and I had ongoing characters and stuff in the first Buttman movies. But the whole, the unifying thing was my character relating to the girls in different ways, and that was imitated like crazy because it just worked. Mm -hmm. And it was a great way to shoot porno because you're directing while you're talking from behind the camera. And I did it, I think, better than some people because I had the skills, the technical skills of working with the camera at the time. You are HIV positive. How did you That's contract correct. that and how is that intersecting? How, did that inter how is that intersecting with your professional career or any of your motivations in, in fighting this case? Well, I had a, a thing as most middle-aged men do where I wanted to experiment with uh, transsexuals, not most, I don't know, some middle-aged men do. And uh, I was a little bit careless and I got HIV. And uh, the interesting thing was it put me in a situation where now I'm more like a normal consumer, where now I'm not getting laid by porn girls at, the, at all. Mm -hmm. Now my life becomes, I'm like this nerdy guy who doesn't get laid at all and I gotta look at porno to get off. So I was looking at porno to get off and my taste expanded. And I realized, oh, there's all sorts of stuff that's really interesting out there that I didn't even know existed because I'm just worried about, you know, having sex with a girl. Now, sex became more artistic to me. It became more interesting to me uh, as, a, as, a, uh, as a medium for expanding our horizons as human beings. And uh, that was significant, and, and my life has turned out 
10 times better, I think, than if I hadn't gotten HIV. Uh, and you're a family man yourself. Yes. Right? You're, you're married and you're a father. I have a daughter. And you are taking who's... care of your daughter. Uh, yes. So. Um, intellectually, uh, you are a libertarian, um, and uh, how did you how did you come to uh, libertarian ideas? Uh, oh God, uh, I was just reading in high school and uh, was very much impressed by Ayn Rand, mm -hmm. and uh, she had arguments and ideas that were different from the socialism that I was exposed to in the late '60s in high school. And it just made more sense to me, and I just started thinking about stuff, and my liberal leanings from high school uh, changed. What um, you know? What what do you think Ayn Rand would say to you in your situation right now? She might condemn porno. I don't know. She had yeah. some weird ideas toward the end. Although she might like like say Rocco's a Freddy now. He takes girls strong, and right. she really so respects that. He's like that. Hank yes. Reardon and Dominique <laughs> in that scene there, and he really knew how to do that idea. And in a way, you know, she was very much into fetish sex. And now, sex. are you? Uh, do you feel like you're? Are you turning into a uh, modern day or a real life Howard Rourke? Are you going to make a, a forty-page sta statement? I, to the jury? Unfortunately, my lawyers don't think I should talk directly to the jury. However, I've been very much uh, motivated to tell them. You know, I think I should be opening and closing also because I can say these ideas mm -hmm. better than they can. Yeah. And though they, they tend to disagree and with me. You were facing how many years in jail? If everything goes Oh, geez, I don't know. It's like 50 or 100? No, no, no. It's or, like uh, six counts of five and, and well, maybe 37 years or something. There's, okay. The, 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 the trailer thing is only like a two year thing. Oh, okay. So but those I are mean, maximum you, sentences, yes, by the way. But I mean, conceivably, so, if everything goes against you, you could spend the rest of your life in jail. Yes. And so, given that, I mean, what what is your what's your quick summation to the jury? What's your what's your argument that why you should not be prosecuted? Uh, why what you're doing is not obscene? Why what you're doing should be, uh, you know, if not celebrated, tolerated in a free society? Because uh, I didn't know I was breaking the law. <laughs> you know, the first thing is, you know, we're we're a government. Of laws and not men. Right. If you don't, if you don't have a law that's written that says that okay, if you do this, you will go to jail, then then that's a good law. Mm -hmm. If you have a law that says, well, you know, we might say that this is obscene, or we might say that's obscene, but we don't really know in advance. We're just going to maybe decide to prosecute you. That's the first number one bad thing about this situation is that I didn't know I was breaking the law. Mm -hmm. What law? If somebody's going to interpret that I was breaking the law. That's just really bad. That's the first number one thing. The second thing is. Um, Remember when uh, we were young and people used to say every once in a while, you know, it's a free country, isn't it? When was the last time you heard that? You know, do you want to live in the kind of country where people can, where the government can just say, I don't like you, I don't like your ideas and what you're doing, and let's just put you in jail? And this is based on, I mean, you are, you're the head of a multi-million dollar corporation that is selling a product that people clearly want. Yes. Nobody is coerced into producing it or consuming it. Yes, that's so, true. That's yeah. correct. Um, do you think, you had mentioned that in terms of sexuality, that people, this society seems to be getting better and improving. How do you feel about the prospects for freedom overall? Uh, I mean, here you are in the dock, I mean, conceivably facing effectively a life sentence. Um, do you feel like America, the United States, is becoming more of a free, uh, more free or less free, or, or what's going on? Well, I'm not sure I'm, that I'm an expert that can answer that question. I think that with the internet and with, it certainly is the case that there are more people that are comfortable with pornography than ever before. Each new generation the, the, of people that come along, the kids that are competing the hell out of me and driving me out of business because they're new and they're young and they've got a lot of energy and they're better with computers than I am and they have no moral qualms about porno, you know, and it used to be it was rare that somebody like me would come along and be fairly intelligent and wanted to do porno movies and was pretty good at it and was willing to buck the, the system and say I'm going to do it anyway. Now you don't have to quite say I'm going to do it anyway because there's so many other people doing it and they're smarter and they're better with me and they're all over the place and, and that tells me that that people are much more comfortable with it, so many more people. And with the internet, you have communication of, of, of injustices and things like that. So people can talk about these ideas of an exchange, you know, well, this is a better society than that one, and that works better than that. So I believe that because of the, the so much greater communication of ideas that the world is becoming a freer place 
place in a lot of different ways. I want to thank you, John, for stopping by Reason TV right. and talking to us today. Boom. Boom. Boom.